Homeowners can play a significant role in reducing home losses to wildland fire by reducing fuels and through careful landscaping in the home ignition zone, an area that extends outward from the home 100 to 200 feet in all directions. Research has shown the home ignition zone greatly impacts the potential for home ignitions during severe wildfires. Case studies indicate the most critical area is a zone of defensible space within 30 feet of the structure. Researchers at Stanford Research Institute studied the 1961 Bel Air Brentwood fire and found that 95 percent of the homes with a non-flammable roof and 30 to 60 feet of defensible space survived. Likewise, a study of the Painted Cave Fire in 1990 by researchers at Berkeley revealed survival of 86 percent of the homes with a non-flammable roof and a minimum of 30 feet of defensible space. Interestingly, when we think about the requirements for combustion in terms of fuel and heat, typically during, or typically for wildland fire, we think about the fuel as being the vegetation. But in this context, we're talking about houses burning down. That's our focus for this specific issue, wildland urban fire. And that means that the house is the fuel. And those things that are burning around the house, anything from vegetation to wood piles to maybe even the neighbor's house next door, those things become actually the heat sources. Cohen's research results indicate that home ignitions usually occur over relatively short distances tens of yards from little things associated with firebrands landing on and around the structure, surface fires burning near the structure. What my investigations are telling me is that more than half the time the big crown fires aren't igniting these structures. It's something else. It's the little things. It's the, if the, if the big crown fires aren't lighting the house, then it's got to be uh, small flames burning up to the house through a continuous fuel bed or firebrands igniting things around the house or the house directly. So really what we're looking at here are things that that produce small flames that end up igniting the house and the house burning down after the big flames go by. How a home is related to its surroundings, the home ignition zone, determines the home's vulnerability to a severe wildfire. The good news is that this typically is under the control of the homeowner, and if homes don't ignite, homes don't burn. The main concerns in making your home more fire resistant include home exterior materials and design, and surrounding flammable materials within the home ignition zone. Fire is a natural part of our ecosystems. It is not a matter of if we are going to have wildfires, but when. We can take steps to keep wildfires from disrupting our lives and damaging our homes, but the role of the homeowner is vital. The important thing is that residents in the wildland urban interface must take action to reduce the ignitability of their homes before wildfire threatens.